All right, so we're going to look at how to do some really common um, effects that you don't have to rely on the presets within the effects panel of Premiere Pro to do. Um, so a lot of these can be applied to both the video tracks and the audio tracks, and we're going to be looking at the pen tool, specifically the pen tool, and how you can sort of use the pen tool to fade in and fade out. We'll also be doing some time remapping um, and showing you some of the time remapping controls and some of the effects controls that are built into the timeline uh, to do speed ramps and things like that. So uh, it's not going to be a long tutorial, uh, but hopefully you'll find it quite useful. So we'll start off with how to use the pen tool to adjust the opacity and things like that. This, this pen tool technique will also be used later on as well, so this bit's quite important. So you've got my timeline here, and as you can see, yours might look similar to this. When you're looking at the timeline, you can't see any way at this stage to actually adjust anything apart from grabbing it and moving it and things like that. However, if you go to the spanner up here, we can click on the show video keyframes, which will be important in a minute. And we can uh, just make sure that they're all okay, which they are. So now when I drag one of these tracks, um, right here up, you'll notice now we can see this line going through it. If I just turn off show video keyframes, you'll see that that line disappears. And that's quite important um, because without that line, it means that we can't actually use the pen tool when we click it. You'll notice it doesn't do anything other than select the layer. So make sure that show video keyframes is selected. And this time I'm just going to zoom in to show you what's going on here. Um, now to zoom in, I'm just grabbing this handle and pushing in. Now you'll notice that the keyframes for this title, which were which has been done automatically for me uh, with the preset title, you can actually see the keyframes here. Uh, keyframes is, are essentially in, in, in both Premiere Pro and After Effects. It's where you essentially create an animation. So a keyframe is the uh, is the ability to um, to adjust a frame and how it, how it responds. So in this case. We've got the pencil selected. At the moment, we've got our line showing through here. And if I just right click here, you'll notice we've got motion, opacity, and time remapping. And you just want to make sure that your effects button is selected with opacity, which mine is. If yours is in one of the motion states or time remapping states, just make sure that it says opacity. And to create a, uh, a fade in, it's quite simply a case of clicking somewhere like here on the timeline and dragging and clicking the beginning and dragging the beginning down. So what this does is when the keyframe is at the bottom, that is 0% and at the top, it's 100%. So you'll get a fade in that looks like that, which you can see on the screen, just a gradual fade in. Now, if you had a clip above this, you could do a crossfade with this technique, or you can just do a fade to black or a fade from black, as you can see here. And you can adjust this keyframe and drag it over. Now, try to make sure that this is at the top. If you do leave it at, say, 25%, the layer will be semi-transparent, as you can see there. So always make sure that the um, top handle is at 100 to make sure that there's no transparency falling through. So if I move further down my timeline now, we can see some areas where I've stacked these up ready to show this as a crossfade. Now, my system's running, I'm going to start running quite slow in a second because um, it's not the best spec Mac. Um, in fact, I'll leave this one at 100%. And it's this one I'll crossfade in. So to show you exactly what else w would happen in this respect, if I do a fade in here, you'll see that this video track continues all the way up to here, and this track starts as before this one actually ends. Now, the reason we'd, we'd do something like this is so we can fade from this video layer into this video layer, and it would look something like this. So it's just blending the two frames together rather than it being a cut rather than so instead of it being a cut, it became more of a crossfade. So this is essentially how you use the pen tool to fade in and fade out. This works exactly the same for using the pen tool on an audio track. If you wanted to fade the audio from zero uh, up to 100%, so it's a gradual fade in rather than just a harsh start, this is again how you would do that. Um, and you could similarly crossfade tracks over the top of each other, um, or you could 
minimize uh, reduce the volume should i say on a track if you've got somebody talking so the pen tool and the keyframes video keyframes and audio keyframes are very powerful and it means that you've got a little bit more flexibility um than what a preset would give you so uh, yeah there's more applications that this could be used for feel free to sort of have a play and get used to using it so the next thing we I'm going to show you is how to do a speed ramp or first I'll show you how to time remap. So say for example this clip here, um, I'm just going to zoom in so we can see this clip a bit better. So with this clip here, I want it to be quicker or something like that or slower. Again, be careful with slowing down footage. If you filmed at 25 frames per second and you want to slow this down by 25%, you're going to start to get a lot of choppy uh, a choppy video coming through. And what I mean by choppy video is it would just look like it's skipping some frames, and that's because there isn't enough frames to be slowed down. So if you are slowing down footage, make sure you've filmed it at 60 frames or higher so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room to play with. But say, for example, this isn't slow, this isn't high frame rate footage this is just a standard 25 frames so it's going to look a little bit ridiculous but regardless I'll show you the process so what I did here is I just right clicked this clip and I'm scrolling down to speed duration if I click on speed duration you'll see here I've got a speed 100% that's what it currently is I've got the ability to reverse the speed if I wanted to have this effect in reverse and the next section is ripple edit shifting trailing clips now this is a good thing to click if, for example, like me here, I've got a timeline already completed. If you want all the footage to follow this clip when we slow it down or speed it up, make sure that the ripple edit is selected. If you don't, if I was to speed this clip up, it would leave a big gap here, which I'd then have to get rid of. So I'm going to change my speed to 100 and let's say 150%. And you can see here it went from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. I'm also going to click on ripple edit shift and press OK. And so what it's done now is it's sped this clip up. And you can see there it's very subtle. Now the other thing that's quite trendy at the moment, and for this I will find a clip which has got a bit of movement in it like this here, uh, is to do a speed ramp. And a speed ramp works different to a just a regular increase or decrease because it's a stylistic thing so you can have the clip starting at this slow pace that I have it here and then speed up and then slow down again so I'll show you how to do that and this involves clicking on the effects tab which I did earlier on so I'm going to click on this and this time change it to time remapping and speed and our, our um, you can see here this is set to opacity and this is set to speed you can see that this layer now looks slightly different and let's see what this all means so again um, I'm looking through my footage and I want it to speed up between here and here. So to do this, I'm going to get my pen tool once more. And I'm going to click plus there. And I'm just going to move here. And I'm going to click plus here. So what this is going to do in a second, if I adjust this, this uh, center bar, it's only going to adjust between these two parameters. So it's really important when you're doing a time remap, you set two points in time. I'm then going to get my selection tool again and grab the center. And you'll notice as I increase the speed to 200%, these two, these two sections are getting closer together. When I release, you're going to see what's happening. So we've still got our regular speed for the beginning and our regular speed for the end, but the center has now been significantly sped up. And let's see what this does. Now, we're not seeing much difference here, and I believe that's more to do with the fact that uh, this computer struggling to render it, so it's not bothering. Uh, let me just see if quarter... I might have to render this to show you in just a second. But what we should see there is a massive increase. Um, I might even just increase this to 500% to make it even more dramatic. Ah, there you go. You sort of see it in that one. Now, the problem with this at the moment is it's slow and it crashes into the speed, then crashes back into the regular speed. Now, if you want to reduce that... All you do is grab one of these handles just here on the left and right. They are separated by the center example there. And you can just drag it and you'll notice there that the ramp isn't a straight line. A straight line just means it will start immediately. If you ramp it up, it means it will gradually go into a speed up and gradually go into a slow down. So if I grab this and show you exactly what's going on, this might help. Now, on a clip that's a little bit more interesting and engaging, this, this effect would be a bit more clear. 
Again, I'm using this on 24 frames per second footage. If you were to do this better, I would suggest filming a slow-mo scene and speeding it up to a regular 25 frames interpolation so that the slowdown is more effective. The, the effect is, is more obviously a slow motion footage. Uh, but there's just an example of how you can use that. So that's it for this tutorial. We've got, we've covered the pen tool and its many applications. We've looked at how to use the pen tool to adjust your opacity. And we've also looked at how the pen tool can then be used for speed remapping and, um, and speed duration. So really quick tutorial, give them a go. Feel free to play around with these settings and don't be afraid to sort of get a bit more advanced than what we've done in today's tutorial.